If you want to make a difference and leave a legacy, I would tell you to find a mentor and seek knowledge. Then turn around, find someone else who needs a mentor and continue to pass the torch. All right, we are on another episode of Pass the Torch podcast. I'm here with a good friend of mine, Karam Javid, or KJ, who he's a fellow entrepreneur. He's built his own startups in the past and now currently runs Fish Joy, a digital agency based out of Atlanta, Georgia. So without further ado, welcome my good friend, KJ, to Pass the Torch podcast. How's it going, guys? It's going great, brother. Uh, just just to get straight into the uh, the meat and potatoes, uh, tell us a little bit about how you got into entrepreneurship and how you got into uh, Fish Joy and like what you're doing right now. Sure. Okay. Entrepreneurship. I. <laughs> it's almost like a bug. You always know you wanted to do it. I've been dabbing into it er- as early as high school. We used to sell books on eBay or getting products from China. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of Alibaba. We imported (laughs) products, (laughs) get them for cheap, and uh, resell on eBay or deal locally. So that's how I got started with entrepreneurship. With Fish Joy, um, you're actually going to laugh, but it came completely randomly. Um, I was in a tough time. My startup ran out of money. Uh, My developer left, so we couldn't really build upon our startup. So... We kind of hit a roadblock. We didn't know what to do next or where to go from there. And then out of the blue, uh, a buddy of mine, he calls me up and he says, Hey, I have, uh, I have this lady. She's, she needs some help building an app. And I was like, okay, I'll take the call. It doesn't hurt to help somebody out. And from there we sat down and she decided, Hey, you're really smart. You know what to do. Build my app. And she wrote us a check within a week and we needed a name. Joyfish.com was taken. Yeah. So we, we did fishjoy.com, and yeah, that's the rest is history. That's crazy. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and so all, all this started off from having the challenge of having started before and, 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 you know, facing that obstacle and saying, hey, I'm not going to let that be where things end. And, and I think that's pretty awesome that you are resilient, you bounce back up your feet, and, and you're back at it again. Exactly. I mean, I literally, you when you hit the roadblock, you don't know what's going on. There's a whole lot of stress, and, and it's it's almost like jumping off a cliff, and you have to just build a parachute or just find a way. The most important thing is you just gotta believe that you know you're following the right path. And you know what? Worst case scenario, you end up getting a job, and then you can always <laughs> dive into entrepreneurship later. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, what what what's like your your most current project right now with Fish Joy. What are you guys working on? I, I know there's probably some secret stuff, but what can you tell us uh, that's your most current po- project? Okay. Um, most currently, there's a few in the pipeline, which I can't talk about, and there's one really, really exciting one that's in the early, early stages, yeah. which is really hush-hush. But uh, we're working actually with a dog walking company. Um, they're based out of Atlanta. They're doing pretty well for themselves. They're actually about to expand into a few other markets. And they approached us to build out their uh, their mobile app and website. So that's exciting. Uh, my first app that I from Fish Joy was actually a dog company. So yeah. <laughs> again, this was a referral directly from that company. So here I am working with dogs again. Very cool. If if you were to describe like your dream project, what what would that look like for you? A dream project would be working on something that really makes an impact, that really helps people. So something like healthcare, technology, or pharmaceutical, really revamping or revolutionizing that industry. Just because, you know, I'm sure in the politics they talk about healthcare reform and this and that. And yeah. It's just, it's such a problem for so many people. And, you know, everything else is a luxury. Health is... I would say the most important thing in your life. Without good health, you know, it doesn't matter how much money you have or how many good friends you have. You gotta have, be healthy, you know, to walk around and have a smile on your face. Definitely. So KJ, 
people think about, okay, digital agency, and automatically that sounds pretty impressive and, and cool, and it, it's like this elusive uh, kind of um, brand where people are like, well, what is that exactly? So tell us a little bit about, like, in your terms, what a digital agency does, and then how Fistjoy truly brings their own personality to that type of company or business. Sure. Okay, a digital agency, it is what it is. It can be many things. It can be social media marketing, it can be developing a website, or it can be even building a mobile app for a client. A digital agency, can it's, it's really anything you want it to be. It's basically building digital products for your clients. Yeah. Uh, the way Fishjoy, like I said, we got, we got started by just building mobile apps initially, and then from there, uh, we realized... You can, it's really difficult to get mobile apps constantly every month as far as cash flow. Yeah. So that's when we started adding websites and marketing and social media marketing. Um, they all work together. It's all working towards the same goal, building you a digital product that can help you generate business and bring your idea to life. Very cool. So was that something you were interested in all along or... You said your friend, you and a friend came and talked to each other. Like, how, how do you break into that world? <laughs> it's actually really funny. Before this, I was in telecom, and my business partner, he was uh, uh, in the financial management industry. Mm -hmm. So completely different industries than the tech industry. Yeah. I'm not. I consider myself a closeted tech nerd. <laughs> so I've always loved tech, but I'm not a developer. I don't usually do the things that you know people at tech conventions go to. Mm -hmm. I love my gadgets, I love laptops, but I'm not a full Mac geek or an iPhone alcoholic. Um, I just always love these types of products. Um, one of the biggest things that people always ask me is, well, if you're not a developer, how can you start an agency or how can you do that? Yeah. Sim simple. You just gotta know, find the right developers, find the right designers, bring them together, and then lead the team. The most important thing that you need to be able to do is get clients and manage your team. That's awesome. Yeah, running a business is hard, and as <laughs> you personally know from from experience, uh, things go wrong sometimes. I mean, it's it's interesting. I just looked at uh, my email list and, and just being completely truthful with uh, some of the obstacles. One person. I saw go off of the email list was was a very important person uh, to our company and, and you're like oh okay well I wonder where we lost that relationship but you lose people uh, whether they be engineers whether they be like board members and and you just gotta stay with it if, if your uh, mission and what you want to create is strong enough you're, you're going to figure out a way regardless of what happens Totally So how how hard was it to push through? And, and, and I guess if someone else is, is going through a similar situation now, right now, what would you what would you want to tell them about um, pushing through those obstacles and, and understanding that it's it's just a matter of time? The most important thing in entrepreneurship or any business for that matter is you need to surround yourself with people can support you going in all alone whether whether you're a, a sole founder um, or you have a co-founder which makes things a lot easier mm -hmm. it's almost like having a marriage where you know you can work things out together you can separate different tasks yeah but if you're going solo uh, I would say start networking with other co-founders or other founders of other businesses um, they don't they know exactly what you're going through and they might need help or they might ask you for business or you might need their business or just network in general, but to break through and just to hang on, you need to have a strong community um, just serving you and you serving them. So I don't know if you know, um, here in Atlanta, we have a ton of startup spaces popping up. Mm -hmm. uh, it started out in New York. There's WeWork, which is really popular. They're one of the biggest companies in the world right now yeah. that just creates co-working spaces. Um, just get involved. With your local startup community, I mean, you'll be surprised who you'll meet, and most of the time, you share the same obstacles they have. Definitely. So, so who around you uh, 
is kind of working on the same companies. Are you alone in that space right now? Or are you able to kind of collaborate and, and bounce ideas off of other companies similar to you? So luckily, um, when I had my first startup, yeah. when I presented it uh, in front of it, it was like about 500 to 1,000 people. Mm-hmm. We, uh, we met a, uh, a founder of a startup who just recently um, stopped it. And him and his co-founders started up this new community. It's like a, a co-working center in, in downtown Atlanta. It's called Switchyards. So I was really lucky, and me and my co-founder, we were both really lucky yeah. uh, as far as timing-wise. We were invited in immediately when the building was being made and during the grand opening. So, uh, and I might as well say, the community is called Switchyards, downtown club in downtown Atlanta. Uh, we help run startups, uh, the events there, and there's a ton of startups and yeah. digital agencies working in there. So I meet people day to day, exchange ideas, uh, exchange problems over a cup of coffee all the time. So I got lucky being able to just go right into that community from day one, but I welcome anybody to join, you know, whether it's switch shorts or any type of community around you. And if you don't have a community around you, let's say you're in, I don't know, in the middle of uh, Asia, all by yourself, uh, and you, you're a foreigner or an expatriate in a different land, there's a ton of online communities, whether you go on Facebook or you go on LinkedIn, um, just get out there and start introducing yourself, uh, either virtually or in the real world. So like, meetups or, what do you think about meetups? I love meetups. Yeah. So one of the biggest questions uh, people ask me I don't have any money to build a mobile app. What yeah. do I do? <laughs> yeah. I say, okay, go find a co-founder. Well, where do I find a co-founder? Meetup.com. There's mm-hmm. always a local startup meetup or a mobile app development meetup. Go up there, raise your hand, and say, hey, I have an idea. Right. Is anybody interested? It's really that easy. But it takes a lot of guts to put yourself out there and put your idea out there. So there's meetup. You, you said switch yards was, I mean... I, I love the idea behind that. I, I'm definitely huge on community and, and being able to collaborate and really work with like-minded people. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So speaking of switch yards, <laughs> I can only imagine the network and the five people you can um, spend your time with the most there and people who are going to be genuinely interested in genuinely interested in, in seeing you succeed and then you're probably going to have a genuine interest in, in their ideas as well even if your ideas aren't um, directly related just just that entrepreneur spirit is going to be pretty high so for for switch yards i'm just curious i'm, I'm going to go back is is that really hard to to break into that community if you're no actually it's not really uh we offer part-time memberships which is about 50 bucks a month and you get access to the main floor, which is essentially a coffee shop. Uh, it's like a private access coffee shop. Instead of sitting at Starbucks where it's really noisy and there's a ton of people, this $50 card gets you in uh, to the main floor and you get your own private coffee bar, yeah. your own barista, and you can have as much as coffee as you want. So just the coffee savings alone is worth it. And um, if you want a full-time membership, which includes a hot task or if you want to, or if you're a small company with um, multiple employees, you can even get an office space there, which can range from you know 200 to 500, and goes up from there depending on how much space you need. But if you're one or two people, a part-time membership is easily accessible here in Atlanta. Very cool. So breaking into just kind of thinking about Fistjoy again, I'm kind of bouncing around a little bit, but um, how do you see the the digital space right now? Do you think that it, it still has a lot of space for creative minds to go in and I already know like knowing you um, you have great ideas and, and is, is there still a lot of space for people who have great ideas to um, still find their own niche within uh, companies the digital world or do you think it's starting to become saturated and crowded? <laughs> That's what everybody always thinks they're like hey I'm too late I just missed the gold rush yeah beautiful thing about technology is there's always a new gold rush. Uh, uh, there's Right now there's chatbots, there's virtual reality, augmented reality, we're going to have uh, mixed reality. Um, wearable watches right now is, it hasn't quite caught on, 
as we'd like it to, you know, with an Apple Watch or a Google Glass, but technology is always changing, platforms are always changing. So with these new platforms, there's always a ton of new ideas to be, you know, to experiment it on or to just try it out there. So I'll give you an example. Um, 25 years ago, yeah. travel agents were big. Mm-hmm. There was a travel agent almost in every single county across America. Then Google came up and the World Wide Web uh, grew. We started getting these aggregators like Expedia, Hotwire, Hotels.com. These type of companies eliminated a lot, a lot of travel agents. So people were like, oh, I don't want to be a travel agency anymore. Yeah. And now apps came out. There's probably, I can name on, on one hand, there's been five billion dollar exits on new travel agencies that are not Expedia, that are not Hotels.com, that are not Orbitz, that took the same model and put it onto mobile and did really, really well. And now there's companies that are taking that model and putting it onto chatbots. Yeah. And from there in the future, it's just going to go on and on and on. We might, now this is just me making a bold prediction, yeah. we might have a visor or a helmet to cover <laughs> over our face. Yeah. You'll be able to interact with like a live agent and they'll ask you, hey, where would you like to go? And then it'll show you like a visual preview of Barcelona or Madrid or uh, Tel Aviv, Israel and just show you different options of where to take a vacation. That's yeah. the next move in travel agency. So it does not have to be in the travel market, it can be in any market. And I believe, you know, just because you're, the, the market saturated in a specific platform, technology is always changing. So always keep your, your, your eyes open and your ears open. Um, you might be an early adopter, but that's okay. You know, Learn from other people's mistakes and get in there and don't give up. Definitely. So you mentioned Alibaba earlier. What are some of the companies that you think are absolutely killing it right now? And, and what are you, what's your, like, your take on why they're so successful? Well, I'm sure we've all seen it on the news. Amazon is yeah. <laughs> killing it. They're, they've blown my expectations. Yeah. What was it? Uh, 2000, or not 2000, 1997 or 98 when they were released. It was just the guy who wanted to put, uh, make a bookstore online. Yeah. It seems so innocent. And if you see the picture <laughs> of Jeff Bezos, he's, he's this uh, nerdy looking guy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I, I, yeah. I want to put books online. Now you look at him. He, puts on a, a leather jacket with sunglasses, mm-hmm. he's really ripped, and he's like, I'm here to take on the whole world. But the most important thing, Amazon, which I love about them, is their customer service. Yeah. That's, uh, it's the greatest company I've ever had the pleasure of uh, being a customer with. No matter what happens, they always take your size, they always put the customer first. And when they do that, they know what exactly the customer wants. I'm more likely to get feedback to them to tell them what I want. Mm-hmm. And from there, they start adding more products. Now they have Amazon Prime, instant delivery, one hour delivery, my groceries, uh, music, movies. It's it's just getting insane now. Yeah, it is. It's Amazon is a behemoth. I mean, they're they're running things and other companies are like, okay, where where is space for me? Because <laughs> Amazon is just... <laughs> I mean, they're continuing to innovate at levels that uh, people aren't able to react fast enough to. And I, I would argue uh, Google and, and Facebook and all the other companies are watching to see what they're coming at. Like, the like whole thing came out of nowhere. Uh, for me, at least. I mean, some people probably were like, oh, yeah, of course. But really? <laughs> you know, where did that come from? They're, they're continuing to just surprise people at every turn. I don't know we just got uh, an Amazon Echo, so the uh, the Alexa, Alexa. yeah, <laughs> and I'm already I'm already impressed uh, with with what it does. Um, the AI component of, of just being just ask what the, the weather is and and actually so when we rescheduled our our podcast, um, I told Alexa I didn't write this in my phone, which that's what we usually do, right? You go oh, in wow, your okay. Google Calendar. I told Alexa, "Hey, schedule. Um, put the co- put the calendar po- uh, past George podcast Thursday at 8 p.m." And so I was going back and forth because she was like, uh, "Does not compute," and I kept rephrasing it. But eventually, it was it was perfect. Um, she understood exactly what I was saying. And then about 30 minutes later, I asked my wife, "I was like, babe, did you put uh, this in the calendar?" 
She's like, no. So Alexa put it in, and just like as if I actually manually That's entered insane. it in, it showed me. Yeah. So we're starting to see, even just with the voice recognition um, and, and only using voice, like how technology is really starting to improve. But from a from a digital agency standpoint, um, what what's your favorite medium to reach people? What do you think is 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 doing well, like between audio, uh, video, or or the written type? Honestly, I think, in my opinion, and my clients that I've seen, mm -hmm. the video is number one, and it's continuing yeah. to grow. I mean, you've seen Instagram copy Snapchat on so many levels. Mm -hmm. It's on, It's been about a year now, yeah. and now they're killing them. Uh, Facebook tried to do that initially with their slingshot up about five years ago, and they failed miserably. But with Instagram, <laughs> yeah. it's it's absolutely insane. Video is growing so quickly. The engagement users have with video is way more than audio. I mean, don't get me wrong. Podcasts are great. Mm -hmm. Audio is great. But there's something about video where you know how they say a picture uh, says a thousand words. Yeah. Well, video has a million words because it's just it's so. Um, that's stimulating when you watch it. Yeah. And if I'm scrolling through Facebook or Instagram, I'm more likely to stop and look at a video. And then if I look at the video, I jump onto the next one, to the next one. Just like the whole uh, Netflix um, situation. People watch a, one episode and then there's a countdown timer, three, two, one, and you're like, oh no, I guess I'll watch another episode. And they just keep going and going and going. And binge watching happens. Yeah. Uh, I love it. video, probably. It, I'll tell you my opinion video is definitely one of my favorite. For all the reasons you just said, like you, you can really it, it, it engages you on so many more levels than, than any other medium. I mean, um, definitely with voice and podcast. The reason why I really got into that is because even without understanding how the person looks, like it, it feels personal. But with a video, mm -hmm. like you, you are part of the the scene itself. Like you're you're a spectator. And you know what? Podcasts are great when you're on a commute, when you're traveling. Mm -hmm. Like I, I listen to the Gary Vee podcast all the time yeah. when I'm uh, when I'm flying because I can just pop it in my ears, relax. I don't have to have something stimulating. <laughs> I can close yeah. my eyes. Yeah. This video really does get annoying too. I don't want to keep looking at something. I'd rather just close my eyes, be yeah. in bed, and just listen to something or while I'm traveling. So it's great. Definitely, that's that's exactly the same way. Um, Started listening to Tim Ferriss and his are a little on oh, the I love Tim Ferriss. yeah <laughs> the longer side, which is perfect because that means I can drive into work. Um, I can listen to some Tim Ferriss while I'm at work, mm -hmm. and I still can I can enjoy that podcast on the way from work too. So really, really exactly. love that. But so in breaking it, it, thinking about the people you work with, um, someone comes to you, they're a client, and. Mm -hmm. What are like some of the the telltale signs that you know a client's on the on the right path? And then I would go as far as to say, what are some things that um, you've experienced and learned that you know that clients usually, if they're doing these things or they're not looking at certain things, that they're already um, going to experience more failure or hardship than they should. Number one thing, excuse me, uh, that I've been taught is you need to validate your idea. Yeah. Uh, and this, this is the one thing that annoys me the most is I need you to sign this NDA uh, so you don't steal my business idea. Yeah. You have no idea how many people come to me on a daily basis. I get an email and say, hey, I have a big idea. I have an app idea. I have a website idea. But you need to sign this NDA. I do it some from time to time. Uh, it doesn't bother me. But... I, like I'll do it because I want to hear your idea. I want, and the biggest way I know it's gonna it's gonna hit a lot of challenges or there's gonna be a problem is if your idea is not very focused. Mm -hmm. So I ask people, have you gotten feedback? Have you talked to the target demographic? Do you have a business model? Is this just an idea that's nice to have, or are you really trying to solve a problem? And then can you find 50 to 100 people who can sign a signature and attest to that problem and say, hey? If you build this problem, I will use it. Yeah. Uh, I always tell every single startup that I work with, whether it's an idea phase or already an existing product or service, try to get 100 people to say, yes, I'm willing to uh, either try your product or buy your product if you make it. 
and don't ask your family, friends, family members, or your friends. We call them head nodders. Tell them to say yes. <laughs> you have the nicest idea. Yeah, I'll totally do it. Yeah. One of uh, my old mentors, a long time ago, he taught me something really valuable, mm-hmm. which is known as coffee shopping. The, the idea of coffee shopping is you go around to just a random coffee shop, yeah. you bother people, and you say, hey, excuse me, can I borrow one minute of your time? I'm building this idea or this startup idea. I just want to ask you four questions. Can I get your feedback? And you'll be surprised. 95% of people, they'll be like, oh, wow, you're building a startup? Yeah, yeah, I told you. Uh, let me know what you're doing. And, and they'll give you honest, brutal feedback. If they don't like it, they'll tell you. Versus a friend or family member who would just be biased and like, yeah, yeah, go, go for it. It's a great idea. All of that. That's definitely really good advice. Yeah, family and friends. Um, they want you to be successful. So, I mean, that can go both ways. They're, they can, they'll be the head nodders and like, oh, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. Um, and then they'll be the ones that they're like, why are you doing that? You could be doing this. <laughs> like, there's so much risk. And they, ha- they, they bring out that, that statistic that 99% of startups fail. And you're like, where did you hear that? Did you just Google that? <laughs> like, like, what is that? And well, you know what? That's, uh, it's funny that you mentioned that. Most startups are going to fail. No. But that shouldn't discourage you to try it because the thing with startups is you're going to pivot a ton of times. The idea you start off with ends so up, it's not going to be the only. Um, idea that you begin with it's not going to be the successful product you had or the, the one that fails you just got to get it out there and just try it even if you fail it doesn't matter failure is like a badge of honor you're a military man you know <laughs> yeah. when you when you went to boot camp you didn't pass the first time I'm sure it was really difficult but you kept pushing yourself and pushing yourself and pushing yourself and yeah. now look how big you are you can probably pick me up and throw me across the yeah. room <laughs> <laughs> you're giving me a lot of credit but you're you're absolutely right like it is you know adversity is something that should be celebrated and and, and embraced and and that's truly how people get stronger i mean you go to the gym and and you work out and you get back out of the gym and what are people saying oh i'm so sore they're that that's like a, a good thing for them they're not exactly they're not regretting that well some of them might be but that comes with the work you know, if no pain, no gain. Um, exactly. You know, that, that goes with the physical sense, and that also goes with being an entrepreneur. And just <laughs> entrepreneurship is just not as um, certain as a lot of other things. You get a law degree, and, and I'm not talking down about these professions, <laughs> but get a law degree, you go to law school, you pass a bar, you're going to be a lawyer. Um, same thing for medical uh, even in the military, you have a degree, you, you qualify, you become a, uh, a military member, and which, which is awesome. Like, your future is, is a lot more certain. Uh, being an entrepreneur, it doesn't matter how smart you are, how strong you are, you could have the greatest idea in the world and it, it could still still tank in the end. And, and, and you're right, like, so for, from the standpoint of a business failing, there's, I think of that two ways. A business can outright fail, and, and it doesn't exist anymore, but I'll tell you right, Mentorch has already failed many times. And what I mean by that is, it is absolutely not the same company that uh, was started three years ago. It's not. Uh, it wasn't even Mentor, like the name has changed because someone else had our domain name, so it's the same thing like Joyfish, and uh, we couldn't we couldn't take that domain name any, like at all. It was, um, I think it's actually a company in, Atlanta that had it so <laughs> great things coming out of there <laughs> yeah and I was like this is this stinks I was like oh let me look up this company and they were doing really good and I was like oh, okay <laughs> yeah we can't take this name because they're gonna exist you, you for a while clearly not you just kept going and going yeah. and you pivot and you just fight through the hardship and that's okay. it man it was <laughs> it's like yeah you take you take it as it goes and you just keep keep moving with it it's not easy, and it's not as glamorous as, as the media makes it look, where, oh, I have a flashy car, this and that. Every single successful entrepreneur who has that flashy car, yeah, they're so humble. They always give advice back. They always tell you, patience, patience, patience. Go get get yourself hurt, fall down, get back up. 
that's the only way you're going to learn. I can give you a full course, a Harvard reviewed course mm. on how to do entrepreneurship and you'll still fail. It's it's just you got to go out there and get your hands dirty. Did you see the uh, the last Gary Vaynerchuk video on um, I think it was wise entrepreneurship like Coachella? I did not, but I'll look at it. Uh, uh, what was it about? So <laughs> that's kind of what goes like everybody thinks entrepreneurship it, it, like right now it's it's the cool thing uh, mm -hmm. to do um, and, and Gary Vee talks a lot about you know how a lot of people used to want to be um, what was it entertainers and, and and athletes and now athletes and or, or entertainers athletes rappers and now they both want to be entrepreneurs and, and that's really where I'm seeing a lot of the focus goes is entrepreneurship but it's like it's it's in name and not by deed, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and there's a complete distinction there. But we're both <laughs> doing it, you know. We're both in the trenches, like every single day. Um, the highs and lows. You know, yep. and you, it's, it's a roller coaster ride. And one day you're like, hey, let me buy you dinner. Let's go out. Let's just. The next the next week you're like eating a catechism. <laughs> yeah. So so who's who's built that resilience in you? Who who early on? Whether it be a, a parent, a coach, a teacher, who like who was there to mentor you and 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 you know helped you along the way that led to where you are today? It would have to be my father. No. My father came to this country. He worked odd jobs as a pizza boy, as a delivery driver, just really really small jobs, you know, to make ends meet. No. Uh, but at the same time, he worked really hard, you know, on engineering, on architectural design, and Slowly by slowly by slowly, he got his own company up and running, and he told me, you know, he used to do small jobs, whether it's five hundred dollars, three hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, every little job he could. He did it for years, and then he got a big break. He landed a major client, which was a pizza chain, and from there they wanted him to build fifteen restaurants across the DMV area, DC, Maryland, Virginia, mm -hmm. and from there the rest is history. Just takes a lot of hard work and resilience and don't give up and it just it's, it's like a battlefield you're constantly being attacked you're constantly uh, you just gotta have motivation and his family was his motivation he wanted to you know, live the American dream yeah. and you know just seeing that growing up you know even even when I was a kid you know I've learned you know you're not supposed to just <laughs> be greedy and just try to get everything immediately you gotta have patience you gotta work towards it um, and I've seen lows of entrepreneurship and highs of entrepreneurship under my father. And seeing that, you know, he's always told me to get an education. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got an education. I wanted to go to law school. I ended up going to law school for two semesters. And I found that early enough it wasn't for me and dropped out. And this is my passion. You know, it might take a little bit longer, but if you do what you love and you get paid for it, I mean, that's the greatest thing. And you don't even have to make a million dollars. If you make a living doing what you love, there's no better thing. That's it. So if, if I'm in the Atlanta area or I'm just someone who wants to connect with you um, and I want you to be my mentor, what what are you going to tell me that I need to do? How are you going to shape that relationship? Like, What are your, your expectations and, and, and how would you uh, see a good mentorship relationship going? So I'm a coffee guy. I meet people for coffee all the time. I actually have two mentees. I think that's how you say it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, I'm uh, training somebody to how to build their own websites, make yeah. themselves uh, independent. Right now, they're working, you know, odd jobs. They're fresh out of college. There's one kid who's like, I don't know what to do with my life. My parents want me to continue my education. I don't know what to do. I don't want a full-time job. I don't want to be trapped in the corporate world. So I'm teaching him how to, you know, gain independence, start his own digital marketing company. And he's learning that. And then I have another friend who he's traveled the world. He um, and I met him completely randomly from a, from another friend. And he he has a lot of uh, distributors in China, but he doesn't know how to build an online business. So I meet with them. I'm gonna say once or twice a week for coffee. Mm -hmm. And I just sit down with them and just you tell me your problems. What issues have you gone and give you my advice? It might not be the best advice, but at least you have some kind of advice moving forward for you. And if there's any recommendations I can give you or if I can introduce you to somebody to help your business and help your goals, I try to do that. And 
I believe, you know, if you help other people, people will help you. It, you know, it's the golden rule. Treat others how you want to be treated. Absolutely. And, and establishing that relationship up front and, and early is, I think, the biggest thing that makes mentorship relationships between the mentor and the mentee uh, the most successful. So uh, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, and if anybody wants to reach me, I'm all over the internet. <laughs> uh, my user handle is on every single platform. It's KJ Help Me. I like it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so you can find me anywhere. Shoot me a message. I've had people from Florida reach out to me randomly asking me for help, and I've helped them in many ways, and they've helped me in places I couldn't even thought of. So it's, it's, the internet has opened up a lot, a lot of um, opportunities. Very cool. So I'm going to go in a little bit into the, the personal realm. What's a, uh, what's a key resource that you use right now that's, that's contributing to your success? So one of the biggest uh, lessons I've learned in business, to succeed, you need two things. Mm -hmm. And I, to me, this is the most important. Communication. Whether it's communication between your clients, your partners, or even prospective uh, employees or contractors. Have you heard of Slack? Of course, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big so user of Slack. <laughs> yeah, I, I use Slack for almost everybody, whether yeah. it's my contractors, my employees, my my co-founder, or even my uh, my mentees. Yeah. I put them in a Slack group and we exchange information. Oh, it's almost like that. a private social network. You can reach me anytime, 24-7. Um, and the other thing is organization. you got to be organized with your goals. If you don't know what you're doing, it's just going to be all over the place. You're mm -hmm. not really holding yourself accountable. So one tool I use is called Trello. Are you familiar with that one? Yes, I haven't used it, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, It's really cool. cool. I, I create a board as in what I need to do, what am I working on, and what I've done. Yeah. And my need to do, I fill it up with like 20, 30 items. Yeah. assign due dates and then I just drag it along as I'm working on it and move it along when I'm done and I do that daily so that way I don't forget what I need to do whether it's uh, hiring somebody posting a job ad or uh, just following up on a project whether it's a logo design or an app design or just any type of bug it just it keeps me organized and if I'm not organized my company falls apart <laughs> Definitely know the feeling. I will absolutely be looking into Trello, and if you're someone who wants to be organized, uh, you heard KJ just now, that sounds like something you absolutely need to be using. And then Slack, we're, we're definitely both on the same page there. That's pretty awesome. Cool. All right, I'm going to dive even more deep into the mind of KJ. So looking at, you know, your... You're making things happen now, but tell us about uh, the biggest obstacle that you've ever faced um, and that whether it was helped uh, along uh, with the help of a mentor or could have been helped with a, with a mentor by your side. Um, the biggest obstacle was probably, like I said, when we ran out of, I mentioned it earlier, when we ran out of money for our startup. Yeah. And when you go from, you know, having payroll, everything, everything's going smoothly, we have plans to grow, even get a nice office, this and that, and then it's pulled away from you. Yeah. It's like, everything falls apart. What am I going to do? I have to let people go. I have to have those conversations with people that I made promises with. I feel bad. And I was just in a terrible, terrible hole. I didn't know what to do. I was like, how are we going to get out of this? Um, I met my mentor, and he guided me and saying, you know, this isn't the end of the world. You can do this or you can do that. And there's many other things you can do. Don't be so down. You can be out. Um, if I didn't have a mentor, honestly, I would still be scrambling. I wouldn't know where I would be. I would just be, I probably would have ended up after having a job. I know that sounds a little derogatory or bad, but it's not the end of the world. Getting a job is not bad, but if you're a true entrepreneur, you know, take your losses, get a job, save up some money, try again. That's it. It's, I love the fact that you're showing that there, there is never a, you know, like a, a stop point necessarily. So it, it's just a pause. Like you, you, you recollect yourself and you gather your things again and then you get ready to launch again. 
and that's exactly it. that's the cycle and, and you it's really for the true entrepreneurs because if you're <laughs> If you're not a true entrepreneur, you're gonna see that you're like, well, that was fun, but I'm done. But if you're a true entrepreneur, you're like, I gotta get back out there, like put me exactly. back on the field. And it's and you know you're a true entrepreneur when you enjoy the pain, and even if you fail many times, you <laughs> yeah. still want to do it again. Yeah. And it's like, are you crazy? All my friends <laughs> are like, why are you doing it again? Yeah. I love it. I don't know why. <laughs> like this guy is a masochist. <laughs> That's the only. Yeah. I probably had maybe a dozen failures before I started fish show. That's awesome. And I'm saying that's awesome. That's like that's motivating, you know. <laughs> someone, someone out there. That's the incredible thing, KJ. They're they're experiencing their first failure, and they're probably all up in arms. They think the world is ending. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, and and then they meet someone like you, and they're like, man, he's he's making it happen. He, he's jumped back after every obstacle and, and he's doing good things and, and that's I mean every single obstacle and every failure comes with lessons that like makes you more resilient and makes you stronger makes you wiser the next time around mm -hmm. and it's necessary what's her name JK Rowling the, uh, the author of uh, Harry Potter yes. I heard she was like rejected like a hundred times and I'm like how, dealing with one rejection is hard enough a hundred times yeah it's like come on put the book away this is never gonna work and she still went, and now you know she's the most rich, uh, one of the richest author in the world. It's insane. Absolutely. <laughs> I think uh, Jack Ma, you know, Alibaba. We were talking Alibaba, about. Alibaba. Yeah. He was rejected from what? What Harvard? Something like twelve times. I'm, I might be exaggerating, but it was it was a ridiculous amount of times. First of all, that he applied that many times, and and then he actually couldn't even get a job at McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Enough, I'm like not even at McDonald's. Yeah. And, I don't think anyone today would argue um, by, you know, an entrepreneurial standpoint or a business standpoint or any standpoint that he he's pretty successful today. You know, <laughs> yeah. and if he had quit after number one or number two or number eight or number nine, like he wouldn't be where he is today. And and that just shows you you have to stay in the fight. You have to keep going. Um, Pain makes you stronger. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. So. Anytime I talk to people who especially had a very, um, you know, hard time at anything or they've, they've had a hard failure, and I don't, there's a difference between um, failing at something and then being a failure. And I, and I think that's what a lot of new entrepreneurs have to, have to realize. Like, because you fail at something does not make you a failure. The moment you become a failure is when is when you quit altogether and you say I, I don't want to do this anymore. I agree. But they need to hear it from guys like you and me, KJ. <laughs> Otherwise, they're they're never gonna uh, think that other people out there are doing the same thing. They're gonna be alone because they're comparing themselves to Mark Zuckerberg, which I think is absolutely ludicrous. <laughs> and you know what? Zuckerberg has failed before. He didn't hit the lottery with Facebook. He had a small, uh, almost like five, six dozen projects that failed. Yeah. He almost got expelled from Harvard with his, um, what was it, the Hot or Not app that he built yeah. on campus. So, you know, if he got expelled, he never would have built Facebook. So, wow. you know, there, everything happens for a reason. Steve Jobs says in a brilliant quote on uh, the, uh, the Stanford Convention speech, is you can't connect the dots uh, moving forward. You can only do it uh, looking backwards in the past. Absolutely. No, that's brilliant. That's awesome. I love it. So talking about quotes, now <laughs> this is one of my favorite parts. Um, what What is a quote, a poem, or a short passage that you reference or you use uh, that, that keeps your passion on fire? So I have this written, uh, I have a big uh, whiteboard in my bedroom. Every morning when I see it, I recite it. And it says, you have the power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. And that's by Marcus Aurelius. He was a Roman oh, emperor. Oh, yeah. Emperor. <laughs> yeah. He's a Stoic, so that means you know you got to make the best of bad situations. Always have a positive mindset because if you have the power in here, nothing outside can hurt you, no matter what your situation is. I love. Yeah. First of all, that Marcus Aurelius quote is amazing, and then Stoicism. Yeah, that's. I think that's kind of goes into our conversation. Um, I think entrepreneurs definitely have a stoic mind. Um, 
yeah, man, it, it can always be worse and, and ah, just the mindset. And you just, I love talking to you because I know you have that mindset and it, it's contagious. And, and, you know, when you get to talk to people who truly embody that and live it, it it's pretty awesome. So It takes practice, but you just got to stay positive. No matter what happens, stay positive. Yeah. And if things go bad, go practice yoga for 30 minutes, breathe. Meditate. No. You'll be fine. That's it. Stick with it. Exactly. Wow. So we have uh, we have reached that point in our program, the, the pass the torch portion, which is another one of my favorite parts. Oh, I guess. Uh, I, I guess, flew by. That was quick. I know. <laughs> I know. It's actually been forty five minutes. <laughs> oh wow. That's, yeah, that's crazy. Where uh, our guest has one minute to pass the torch and leave a legacy. We all know a mentor is a person who has achieved a level of success that we desire and can effectively guide us to success as well. Based on the success you, KJ, have achieved at this point in your life, if you could pass the torch and leave a legacy message to your former self or anyone in a similar situation, how would you pass the torch in one hot minute. I would say immediately believe in yourself. It doesn't matter what crazy idea you have, whether it works or not, just do it. Go for it. Try it, fail, and do it again. There's technology, like I mentioned, it's changing every single day. Invest in technology. Become part of technology. Build something that's going to help people. And don't take no for an answer. Whether you want a job, Get on the phone, create a video, send a video resume to an email, pick up the phone, contact people, make contacts. Whether you get rejected a hundred times, a thousand times, five million times, don't take no for an answer and keep doing what you need to do. And there you have it. Stay in the fight. Do not give up. Because we're going to watch Fish Joy go on to do great things. And it's because KJ and his team his co-founders, and everyone he surrounds himself with are, are continuing to push forward. He's continuing to work with them. And, and, and that's why me and him, we definitely, uh, every once in a while, we'll pick up the phone and we'll, and we'll talk because we need definitely. that network. You need that support system. So do not give up, ever. Just do it. Just do it. All right. <laughs> This has been another episode of Passes Torch Podcast with Levante Santos and KJ. We are reminding you to seek knowledge and pass the torch. <laughs>